we know it. And, you know, like me, I grew up in Wisconsin, but I taught in Houston. So for me, it, it was a struggle for, to start to like, try to find those connection points. Cause I was in a place that I was totally unfamiliar with, mm-hmm. but, but you having that kind of organic moment of like, I see myself in this kid. How, how did you use that, especially to, you know, build connection and relationship with kids? Um, that's a great question. Yeah. And, and it's so, so important because you kids are not dumb and they recognize authenticity. And I had an authentic story. And, you know, I, I go back to this all the time. Like it's, I'm very fortunate in that I have skateboarding, which kids gravitate towards. I have, uh, I have a real life model for success that is proven. I did it and I can show it to you. And the kids recognize that. And, you know, so a lot of times, you know, I think that authenticity, whether it was somebody that looked like me, sounded like me, came from the same background as me or not, they understood the hustle of that. And kids are hustlers. And, and you know, you look at a lot of the people that, that, our, that our students and our kids today look up to and idolize. I mean, if you go do a poll of 100 kids across the nation and ask them who, they're, who they idolize the most, it's going to be all of these kind of celebrity sort of, you know, these real rise to fame type people. Um, you know, I, I don't know that a lot of people are going to say the, the congressman down the street, you know. So authenticity speaks. And, and that's how I made connections with a lot of these kids. And, and I also, you know, think that I'm very real with them as well. I'll talk about the dollars and cents of it. I'll talk about, you know, what it took to get this to this to this. And, you know, the realistic idea of making it and, and the hustle and all of that and, and what, you know, what's realistic about that, what it means to work towards something. Um, you know, I, this idea that we sell lottery tickets is ridiculous because none of this is a lottery ticket. This isn't luck. This is looking at opportunity, looking at uh, the network and working through that process. And so it's an authentic story. And when kids see authenticity, they believe it, they know it. And, uh, you know, we can't fake that. So I think that's kind of how I was able to build connections with students in a way. Um, and, you know, I understand that culture. I, that's how I grew up. I grew up in the skate culture. I grew up skating in downtown Minneapolis. And um, so you have to, you know, you have to, you have to be authentic. That's kind of number one. I think it's really, you can really tell when, when an educator, a teacher, a principal, doesn't matter. When any educator comes into the room and tries to be cool with the kids and it's so forced, Oh, it's just painful to watch. And so, yeah, I think to answer that question, the word I would use time and time and time again is authenticity. You've got to be authentic. You know, and it's funny that you say that word, and I wrote that down, kids recognize authenticity, because Kyle and I are in the middle of writing a book. Mm. And our very first chapter in that book of how to teach inspired is to be yourself, to be authentic. Yep. And... um, you know, when Kyle and I met uh, teaching, that was one of the first things that I noticed about him is that I didn't feel that he was giving. I knew the guy that I would talk to after school and during lunchtime. I'm saying to myself, if I connect with you, why aren't our kids connecting with you? Because we share the same kids. Yeah. And so I just kind of start picking apart at who he was and showing and really kind of encouraging him to share those things with your kids. Mm -hmm. So what you're at a school that's predominantly Hispanic, you know, but you love country music, introduce them to country music because they'll feel who you are within that. Yeah. And that's because I'm a musician. So I'm a rap, I'm a former rapper. So my, my niche is that I go into the classrooms. I'm going to freestyle rap. You're going to get a freestyle rap for me at some point. (laughs) And, and, and usually when the kids see that, I instantly have their attention. Yeah, of course. of course. I can't tell everybody to go out and say, hey, go freestyle rap for your kids. That's not going to work for everybody. You know, that could be a big bomb for some people, but <laughs> that's not me saying I'm trying to be something I'm not. Yeah. You know, I got to DJ um, our, our winter party for all our lunches. Teachers were like, oh my God, you can DJ, you can do this. I was like, I used to DJ when I was in college. Mm-hmm. You know, that that that's the easy job. I say, and I'm just being me. Yeah. You know, my, my audience is different. You know, I don't have, I have, a, I have a water instead of the libations that I would have when I was in college, but 
the, diff, the story is still the same. You know, it's exactly. still me being exactly who I am. And I, I'm yeah. glad you said that for our listeners, because I think so many teachers try to put up a front. Exactly. Yes. And they try to become something that they're not in order to try to reach a kid or to reach students when really students want, they, they will never meet another Mr. Rivard. They'll yeah. never meet another Mr. Krieger. They'll never meet another Mr. Law. So I think our job as educators is to give them that most authentic experience with ourselves. So I'm glad you said that to our listeners. 